Poza rządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. Good evening. My name is Martina and you are listening to Prismat Radio. Our topic for tonight is volunteering. Who, what, why and where. You will hear about volunteering from a perspective of foreign volunteers who are staying here in Krakow for nine months and some special guests too. Before we start with the topic, we're gonna listen to Crazy Glue by Melanie Ungar. Poza rządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. And welcome back. That was Melanie Ungar and Crazy Glue. So who am I exactly and why am I here talking about volunteering? My name is Martina, I'm from Croatia, and I'm an EVS volunteer here in Krakow in STREAM, Youth Development and Integration Association. When I say that I'm an EVS volunteer, it means that I got here with the help of EVS, the European Voluntary Service. EVS is European Union program that promotes the mobility of young people through international activities with a non-formal education dimension, such as youth exchanges, voluntary service, youth initiatives and training of youth workers. UES offers young people the opportunity to volunteer up to 12 months in another country. If you are listening and thinking about applying, I'm sure you're wondering how to do it. The whole process is really simple. On the web pages of UES, you have all the information you need. And if you need some extra information, you can always send them your questions. The most important thing is that you're a person between 18 and 30 years old and that you are willing and ready to try something new. There are many projects that you can apply in many different countries. You don't have to have a university degree or any special skills to apply, but there are some skills that can help you a lot. For example, if you can speak English or some other foreign language. You can browse through projects and countries and apply for the ones that you like the most. Some projects can ask you to send them your CV or motivational letter. It all depends on the project. After you apply, you wait for the response from the organization who is in charge of the project. They can propose a Skype interview or ask some additional information and then tell you if you're accepted or not. If you don't get accepted into the first project you apply to, don't worry. There are many projects and you can keep applying until you get accepted. And that's exactly what happened to me. When I was finishing my university, I was thinking about what I want to do next. So I started looking into different programs abroad, internships, workshops, volunteering. And that's how I found out about EVS. It seemed like a good opportunity, so I did a little research about the options and demands of the program. After a lot of googling and reading, I found a few projects that I liked and I applied. Like I said, application is really simple and easy, and all of the steps are explained on the website. You can easily follow them. Shortly after sending my application, I received an email and a Skype interview proposition. I accepted, and after the interview, they accepted me. So here I am, far, far away from home and loving it. And I love working with Stream. And because I love working with Stream so much, I want to tell you a little bit about it. Stream was established in 2001 as a non-governmental organization, NGO. Members of association are active people willing to undertake actions aimed at building open-minded society, interested in youth problems, international education, and culture. STREAM leads a vast number of diverse projects in Poland and beyond its boundaries, mainly in the field of culture, culture and inter- intercultural education. They aim at, at developing awareness, national and European, while not neglecting its reg- regional levels. The association initiates and promotes all forms of youth activities, And they reach that goal by organizing trainings, seminars, conferences, public events, meetings, and youth exchanges. Today, STREAM is one of the biggest organizations working with European Voluntary Service in Poland. I can tell you that all the people I met in STREAM and who I met because of STREAM are very nice and friendly, and I have an opportunity to really learn a lot. Before we go on, it's time for some music. This is So In Love. By Plex. Poza rządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. We are back in radio, Prismat studio, and we are continuing the topic of volunteering. As you know, if you are with us from the start, I am volunteering in Stream Association here in Krakow. But what do I do exactly? My job in Stream Office is to help with the office work, organize different events and activities, promote volunteering, and Stream. 
communicating with other organizations and help the rest of the volunteers. In this project, there are 29 volunteers from 14 different countries, and all of us are working in different hosting organizations. Schools, kindergartens, library, and there's me and the stream office. I hope that in our next broadcast, you will have a chance to meet some of the volunteers. And speaking about that, we have one guest here in studio. Her name is Samantha. Good evening, Samantha. Hi. So, Sam, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? How old are you? And how did you decide to go volunteering in a foreign country? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, my name is Sam. I'm 19 uh, years old and I'm from France. I decided to, like after high school, I wanted to travel a little bit and discover a little bit the world. And actually, I was searching for some internship or some stuff like this but I didn't find any and then a friend of mine who did in UVS last year talked to me about this um, this thing and he told me yeah you should try you should try so this is how I found out like I was searching for UVS and I found one in Poland and I'm really happy to be here great and we are happy to have you but why, why Poland? Was it your first choice? Um, did you read about the country at first? Why did you decide to come here? Actually, it was kind of randomly. I was applying everywhere, like in different countries. But I really liked Poland since the beginning. I don't know why. And it's actually the first one I got accepted in. So, yeah, it was kind of randomly. But I searched, like, I was searching in my home, like, what's, what's Poland look like? And it was really beautiful, like the mountains and everything. So, yeah. Okay, so you are from France and you're here in Poland volunteering. But where do you work? What do you do? Uh, I'm working in a kindergarten and uh, I'm taking care of uh, children, help, uh, help them like eating, play with them. And uh, I'm also like here for helping them get to know a little bit more about my culture. So yeah, and I'm also like doing some activities with them. For example, for Christmas, I'm planning on doing a Christmas show with the kids. And yeah, so it's awesome. Nice, so I think you like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. Okay, and now can you just um, in some, in, in a few words, describe uh, your day yeah. at, at work? <clears throat> uh, I'm starting working at like eight, uh, nine in the morning. So when I'm, when I come in the kindergarten, the kids are having breakfast, so I'm helping them eating. And then they, I'm playing a little bit with them. After that, they've got this kind of lessons. So I'm just listening and trying to learn a few words of Polish. <laughs> and then it's the second breakfast, so I'm also helping them eating. And then sometimes, sometimes they have a gym class or some activities. So I help them getting change. Basically, that's what I do. Okay, and can you tell us what is your favorite part of the job? Uh, my favorite part of the job, I think it's like the connection you have with the kids. And because like when I first get, get here, I was so lost my first day uh, because everyone was speaking in Polish and the kids were like coming to me and asking me some stuff and I didn't understand anything. <laughs> so I was kind of lost. But now... Uh, I know how to communicate with them a little bit more, so I like it. You like your job. And what about Krakow? Now we're almost here for two months. I'm sure you got to know the city a little bit. What do you think? Do you like Krakow? Yeah, um, actually I didn't. Uh, I went to uh, Warsaw and Wroclaw. And I think that for the moment, Krakow is the city I like the most because it's not that big, but it's not that small. And there is a lot of people... Um, especially during the Christmas time. It's amazing with the Christmas market. And yeah, it's a great city with like a lot of history and cultured events. So yeah, really interesting museum I have here too. So, And I know that there's a lot of uh, stuff to do. Like every day if you want to do something, you yeah. can always go. There are concerts and exhibitions and just the Christmas market yeah. that is opened. I know everything is, is amazing. Um, one part of uh, us being here is getting to know the culture, and one part of the culture is food. So what yeah. do you think about Polish food? <laughs> Polish food is awesome, really. I think I'm going to take like 10 kilos before going back to France. But yeah, it's amazing, amazing. 
what what is your favorite Polish food? Do you um, have your favorite so far? I would say the zapiekanka. Yeah. Zapiekanka? Yeah. The one with the chicken and the cheese is really my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I like that one too. Uh, and tell me, mm, do you miss home? Uh, yeah, sometimes a little bit, but I think it's normal. Like, I mean, it's the first time that I'm like going to spend that much of time away. But I mean, all the things that I've, I have here are like helping me like to forget about my home and everything because I'm always with some amazing people doing some stuff and yeah so sometimes I can feel a little bit homesick but not that much not that much it's the same with me um, so you said when you first got here that uh, you were a little bit confused because everyone was speaking Polish and the kids yeah. in the ki kindergarten and everybody. So what was actually the biggest challenge for you here? Was it the language or was it the new city, the new people around you? Um, it was more about the language, yeah, I think, because, I mean, I'm talking with uh, in English with the stream people, so there was no problem with that. But, yeah, the first day of work, like, I was really like, okay, this is the challenge now. I have to, like, deal with my work and try to get involved with it and just not watch and doing nothing. But I think I'm doing great for now. It's getting better because the first week was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> But now I'm feeling better. Um, okay, so that was your your biggest challenge. And what so far is the thing that you like the most? Like, is it being independent or getting to know new people or eating zapikanka? What <laughs> What do you like the most so far? I think it's like ev everything. Like, I mean, it's being with new people and in a new environment and discover some new thing. New things. It's really like helpful, and I think that it's good for everyone like not being like always uh, surrounded by the things you know but getting to know better some stuff you don't know going into a new city meeting some people learning about different culture is also very good and this is um, a part of the reason why I wanted to, to go to Poland because um, I saw that the culture is very different than in France and I don't know, I was just, like, curious about it. Yeah, I think that mm, French culture and Polish culture are definitely yeah. different. Um, what is the biggest difference for you? Um, except the language, <laughs> I would say the food. The food is really different. And maybe, yeah, the way of, the way of living, the way of people's living is completely different. Like, in France, we have this... Um, really schedule everything is really scheduled but in Poland I've got the impression that it's kind of like yeah you can do this now or later it's all right there's no problem yeah for me it was I spent the last seven years in the coast of Croatia mm -hmm. and in the winter it doesn't snow but it's really rainy and it's really cold And when it's rainy and cold, people really don't go out. The city is empty in the evening. And here, every time I'm out in, in the city in the evening, it, it, it's cold. It's colder than it was at home, but still people are out. Everybody's out. They're going to coffee places. They're going shopping. They're just walking around. So I think that is really nice. It's, it's a nice change. Like they, You go out and you don't care if it's cold or snowing or, or raining. So I really can't wait yeah. for, for more snow here. I think it's going to be really, really beautiful. Yeah, because in France it's not snowing. And so, yeah, this morning uh, it was snowing outside and I was super excited. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And yeah, so I like it a lot because I didn't saw any snow in France for like five years now. And I love the snow. Yeah, me too. So you think that this is a, a good experience for everyone to try, no matter where they're coming from? Mm, I mean, maybe not for everyone, because not everyone wants to travel and not everyone has the same state of mind, you know? Yeah. But I think if some people, like, want to do it, but they're, like, kind of scared and everything, they shouldn't be scared because it's a really good experience, yeah. Uh, you have to give yourself and other people the opportunity yeah. when you are somewhere like that, by yourself and not knowing anyone. Definitely, I agree. Poza rządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. This was Dada and the Weatherman and Human Light. My name is Martin and you're listening to Prismat Radio. 
We have Sam here in the studio, an EVS volunteer like me, who is spending nine months here in Poland. Sam, tell me, how did your family and friends react when you told them that you are leaving your country to do volunteer work, that you're going to be away for such a long time? Um, and do you know anyone who did this kind of volunteering before, except your friend? Okay, um, well, my family was really happy for me. They were, like, um, really happy because I didn't know what else to do. And this is why I was searching for, like, I didn't want it to go to uni. And there was they were a little bit scared first, but then they were happy for me. And actually, when I knew I was accepted in this project, I was with my best friend, and she was so happy for me, and I was feeling really, like, Uh, surrounded by motivation so that was nice my dad uh, was a bit more sad like I'm gonna miss you stay are you sure you don't want to stay you can go do whatever you want but in France but he's okay with that now yeah I know few people who did an EVS um, in Lithuania so my friend was the was one of them but also two other friends but they were in the same project mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice. So you had uh, good support yeah, from your family definitely. and friends. Everyone was really happy that you're going. Not the same thing happened to me. Really? Why? Because um, I finished my university and like I said, I really wanted to do something. I wanted to go abroad. I wanted to meet new people to spread my wings a little bit. And I found this project and I liked it really a lot. But I was... Um, I was, in, I was living in a different city than my hometown in during university. So I spent seven years away from my parents, my family, and my friends who I have in my, in my hometown. So everybody was kind of hoping that after university, I will go home and spend some time at home. Um, unfortunately for them, that didn't happen. I came here. Um, But like, they are happy for me, for the opportunity I have, and they see that everything is okay, you know, that uh, I have a good job and I have good people around me. But I think they just miss me. But well, maybe you can ask them to come and visit you then. Of course, some mm -hmm. of them will have to come to Poland. Maybe they will not come right now, like in the middle of winter, but sometime later in springtime, I'm sure some of them will come. They, they already said They That's will. nice. And uh, I didn't know anyone before. Like you, you, you know a few people who did the uh, EVS project. I didn't know anyone. I just, uh, I know people who did Erasmus. So they had this student exchange. But I never knew anyone who did volunteering outside of Croatia. I did some of the volunteering before in, in Croatia in different places, but never outside. So this is really, this is really great. And uh, because I didn't know anyone else, it was a really maybe crazy, a little bit crazy, but also I think a brave thing to do, just to go by yourself in the unknown waters. Yeah, completely. Like, my friend already explained me everything EVS was about. It was like, oh, you are going to do this kind of stuff with a lot of people. And is mostly the part of why I'm here, because it really motivates me. And then I was like, oh, I need to do it. UVS is so nice. That's great. So you had not just support, but also motivation from other people. Yeah. That's great. So you and me, we both came here in the beginning of October. And I actually did most of my preparation for Poland before summer, because during the whole summer I was working. And then I had just one week at home to buy my suitcase and to pack my things and to get some paperwork done. Uh, so everything happened really, really fast. Um, I did have a chance during summer in my days off and during my breaks to Google some facts about Poland, about the weather, about food, about people. I, it's not the same like when you're here, but still, I, I got some information. Um, and of course, uh, my, my mentor and my organization stream and my assistant, I got all of them and they were all helping me really, really a lot about the paperwork and the plane tickets and some, you know, tips and tricks about Poland and also about the job. So before coming here, how did you prepare? What did you do? Uh, it was kind of complicated for me because I applied at the last minute, like because most of projects start in, um, who start in October, um, the people are already like selected in kind of March or April, yes. I think. Um, it was not the case for me. I started looking for UVS in August. 
and yeah, so I was applying everywhere. I got accepted in this project two weeks before October. So I had like a really short time to prepare myself. And my assistant was amazing. She was helping me a lot, like with my plans to get in there all the stuff. So I was running everywhere, like, I need a backpack, I need a coat because it's going to be so cold. And yeah, I had the time to Google um, some little stuff about Poland, about Krakow, and about what's around, like, what can I visit or everything. But not that much. I was really in a hurry. So. Yeah, just like me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't have a chance to be nerds and really prepare, yeah. you know, everything. And yeah, I know that some volunteer already um, tried to learn Polish before coming here. I wanted to do it too, but I didn't have the time. I was yeah. just, like, too busy. The same with me. Okay, you just found out two weeks before. Yeah. I knew the whole summer that I was accepted, but I was really busy at, at work, and I spoke all the other languages because I worked in the tourist department but not Polish. So I really didn't have any any time to, to, to learn Polish or to prepare in any other way for, for this experience. But actually, I think it's a good thing because I didn't have the time to realize what was happening in my life. I was just like, let's go to Poland, let's go to Poland. I think this is why I was that excited to go because I didn't have the time and weeks and weeks thinking about like, I'm going to Poland, I need this and this. No, everything was in a hurry. And you didn't have time to panic. No. <laughs> because you're living your country. Yeah, that's great. I also didn't have time to panic but because of work. Uh, but I know that I would not be able to do all of this if I didn't have the help from, from Stream and, and my uh, mentor and my assistant. So shout out here to Hubert and Ola. Thank you so much for everything. Um, and Carolina is the best assistant. <laughs> And tell me, okay, so we have seven more months to go, mm -hmm. but in these two months, what did this experience give to you? What can you say that you learned in these two months? Uh, did you discover something new about yourself? Um, do you think that you handled something uh, better than you thought you would? Or did you have some problems? Um, well, for now... Um I don't really know. Of course, I learned some. St I learned some stuff like about my job, about how to communicate with people without talking, because before coming here, um, I thought that words were really important to communicate with people. But now I'm just like, no, they're not that important because I can communicate with those kids without talking. And I don't have any special goals to achieve during my EVS. I don't want to put the pressure on me to tell me like I'm going to be a new person in seven months. I'm just like living the thing and then I will see. I mean, it's not something that you can notice like right away. Yeah, I agree. And you said that really in a nice way. Thanks. Um, so do we have some advice for people who are listening to us and maybe want to apply? Do we have some kind of little motivation for them or some advice when they're looking for projects? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, the most important thing is don't be scared because it might be a little bit like scary to tell yourself you're going to leave everything behind and start a new life in a new country with new people. Even me, I was a little bit scared. I was like, oh my God, what did I do? Is that Was that a mistake or not? <laughs> but don't think too much. If you want to do it, just get your opportunity and do it and you won't regret it for sure. I agree with everything you said. Don't be scared. Take the opportunity. Make the leap because I think sometimes all of us just want to plan things because we feel safe and it's our comfort zone. But some things you will never have if you don't step out of it. So yeah. really, we should be brave and step out of our comfort zone, not be, not be scared, or even do it even if you're scared. You yeah. know, just, be just try. Yeah, completely. Just try. And also, um, the thing who really helped me when I first get here is that I was afraid because I will be surrounded with a lot of new people. But actually... Uh, as soon as I came, I saw that everyone was really supportive of each other and really helpful. And we were already friends, even if we didn't know each other. Like, there is the fact that because you're a volunteer, you're all together. And that's a really good thing. They're great support. So don't be scared because you don't know the people. Yeah, we really got a good, good support system made from our 
um, mentors, our yeah. assistants from the whole stream organization, and I think even from each other. Yeah. Everyone leans on in, on each other because we are 29 people, and we always definitely have someone to talk to or mm. someone to go out with. We are never alone. In a way, we I think we are making our little EBS family. Yeah. Here in Krakow, and I like it a lot. Yeah, me too. Okay. Thanks a lot, Sam. Uh, we're gonna take another break and listen to Out of Air by Sydney Lay. Poza rządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. And we are back. That was Out of Air by Sydney Lee. We are back in Radio Prisma Studio talking to Sam, a French volunteer here in Krakow. So, Sam, I want to ask you, what do you think? Can this experience of volunteering in a, in a foreign country help people to decide maybe what they want to do next, what they want to do for a living, what they want to do when they go back to their countries, or maybe what they don't want to do? Yeah, completely. Um, because it's a really intense experience, I think that it can bring a lot to someone and help the person to get to know him better. So, yeah, um, I know a lot of people who did UVS, like even uh, in Krakow last year, and it really helped them uh, knowing what they want to do. For example, like, I want to live in Poland now, I didn't expect that, but I want to stay here. Or just like, okay, now I want to study that kind of thing. And yeah, so I think it can really help people to find their way in general. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that this experience can really open eyes for, for some people and um, help them realize some things because I also heard a lot of ex-volunteers talking about like uh, EVS helped me to realize I want to become a teacher or EVS uh, helped me to realize that I want to work with uh, disabled people or with uh, kids or with teenagers. So definitely it can give you some kind of sense of direction. And also a lot of people said when I came to the city, I really, I, I like the city, but I couldn't imagine myself living here. And then they just fall in love with Poland, with the, the whole city, with Krakow, uh, with the weather, with food, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and they just stay and they stay here. So I think um, this kind of experience, like you said, it's really intense. And I think in these two months we met maybe... 60 new people yeah definitely <laughs> so, so many people sometimes just talking to people from other countries can really hel help you get some kind of sense of direction and uh, maybe give you just a new idea or a new goal uh, and many times even just mo motivation even just motivation because you see people who are from different countries and you see them all here doing things together and it makes you realize that maybe everything that we want to do is not so hard. Maybe we just have to try and, and do it and then it would be easier and yeah. we can do it. Yeah, completely. Like, for example, uh, I'm here for two months now and now I've got this thing that I want to learn Spanish. I don't know why, maybe because there is so many Spanish people in, in the UVS, but I really want to learn it. And so I'm really motivated. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to take some Spanish lessons and some stuff like that, that in France, I was like, why speak in Spanish? I don't want to. But since I'm here, I'm like, why not? I can do it. But also, I think that UVS is very intense and it can open your eyes to some stuff. But if you're spending the all nine months thinking about like, okay, um, I need to find a, find a goal, I need to change, I need to find my way, like what I want to do. It's not going to work. You just need to live it and then you will see. You have to just go with the flow and then you will see what, what happens. Yeah. I agree. I agree. We, I, don't, I don't think anyone, and especially volunteers here, should put too much pressure yeah. on themselves because if you put pressure on you, it, just, it, it won't turn out as well as it maybe can. So great, learning yeah. Spanish. Yeah, learning Spanish. <laughs> I think definitely this because there's so many Spanish people around us and not just in the project, but also in the city. Uh, and I think it's the influence. And Spanish is yeah, a beautiful yeah. language. Yeah, and actually when I was in high school, um, I was learning Spanish, but I didn't talk it very seriously. I was like, okay, I can speak English. I don't need Spanish. But now I'm just like, okay, the language is beautiful. Maybe I can, I can try, give it a shot. Yeah, I actually have a similar thing because I never even thought about French. And now mm -hmm. I met French I people here. <laughs> yeah, and you're French and my roommate is French. 
And sometimes I'm like, I just wish I could speak French, you know, just a little bit, just a few mm-hmm. sentences so we can connect on a different level. Because I think it's different when you can talk to people in their own language. It yeah. just, the, the, the sense of language and the whole atmosphere is, is different. Yeah, it's, it's true. But it's also a good thing. Like, for example, uh, there is a lot of French people in the project this year. But, I mean, we're not making, like, a group and just like the French group, when there are some, we are surrounded by other people, we're talking in English because we don't want to be like the outsider who are always speaking in French, you know? Yeah, and I, I think it's good yeah. because maybe then you would not get to know all the people you can get to know and have as, as much fun as we all have together, 14 different countries, <laughs> don't forget. Um, okay, we are at the end of this broadcast. Thank you, Sam, for being here with us. Thank you for giving us all the information. You're welcome. Um, I want to thank Agnieszka for the technical support. Thank you so much. You're the best. Um, I want to thank my wonderful bosses, uh, Marco and Dorota, who gave this opportunity to me and all the wonderful volunteers and people that I got to meet so far. And thank you, all of you, for listening to us. And we'll be back next month. I'm saying goodbye with some more good music. This is We Just Be by Mickey Blue.